Good morning, Lord God. Yes, we want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. We pray that God will do something new in your home, even as you gather your families and worship with us this morning. I know that God is going to do something great and supernatural in your lives. With every head bowed and eyes closed, we're going to open the word in prayer. Father, we bless your holy name and we thank you that we can stand before your throne this morning. At the outset, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We commit everything to your feet this morning, O oh God. We worship the name that's above every other name. And we thank you, Lord, that even as we come to worship you, to exalt you, we expect your presence, O oh God. And we know that you would show up, O oh God. Father, for every online listener this morning, we pray that you would invade their homes with your presence, O oh God. And Father, whatever they need from you this morning, they would receive. Oh God, we pray for every sick body this morning, oh Lord, that you would heal. Father, you would do what you're famous for. You are the healer divine. You are the way maker. For someone that needs you this morning, you would make a way, oh God. We thank you for the furtherance of our service, oh God. We thank you that your presence will come down. Give us an open heaven, oh God. And Father, even for your word that's to come, oh God, we thank you, Lord, that you would use your servant. Thank you, Father, for your fire that would fall upon our God. Father, we bless your name and we thank you that no weapon that's formed against us will prosper. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would take control in Jesus' mighty name.
Speak my word, the word of God, the sermon this morning. Miracles are possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. Miracles are possible through the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that when before Jesus ascended, he said, you shall receive power. And when he spoke to the early disciples in the first century church, something happened. When this power hit them and descended upon them, there was an electrifying presence of God that shook the world. Because wherever they walked, the Bible says that even the shadow of Peter healed people. Come on. That wherever they walked, miracles took place because all he said, the power of God is upon you. He says that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost falls upon you. Receive power for what this morning, my brother and sister. Receive power for your miracle. I believe that we are in a season of miracles. The enemy had tried to hold the church back. The enemy tried to bring the church to a place of desolation. He tried to bring the church to a place of emptiness. But we have news for him this morning and let him know that the church is not desolate. The church is not a barren place anymore. But the church is a place that where God says in Isaiah chapter 62 when he says, For Zion's sake I will hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. And what brightness do you want this morning? The glory of the Lord is beginning to shine upon the church again. Because you're going to receive your miracle. What miracle is it that you want today? A miracle of healing? Maybe a miracle of deliverance from demonic powers? Maybe a miracle of supply, you need a breakthrough financially. Maybe you need a miracle of restoration and life. I am here to say to you, yes, that miracle of healing is upon you this morning. Because God begins to preserve the church and for Zion's sake, he says that I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. And I want you to listen to what verse 4 says, verse 3 says rather. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. The crown of glory is going to speak of the richness of royalty that comes upon the church. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Where's the kings and the queens that begins to arise with authority in the church? And then, and then this is what God says. In the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem. Hallelujah. All oh, that gifts given to you today, church, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive that royal diadem in the hand of your God? And I love us for, and I want to speak to you today as a church as Zion, before we step into miracles this morning. Because before miracles enter, I want to assure you as a church, that you are not in a place of desolation. The Bible says in verse 4, you shall no longer be termed forsaken. Hallelujah. Nobody is forsaken. Nor shall your land be any more termed desolate. There's no desolation. There's no emptiness. Because I believe that God is flooding your soul right now. And He's filling you as a church right now that is listening under the sound of my voice that a spirit of miracles enter you right now. Uh, but you shall be called Hezabah and this is what it says in your land for the land delights in you and your land shall be married. Hallelujah. God is intertwining something great this morning into you as a church. No more desolation. You were not empty. But the Lord is going to pick you up. And you know what? Surely he says, I will no longer give your grain as food for your enemies. Your food shall be yours. Hallelujah. Nothing of what belongs to you, whatever the miracle that you want today, is your sick body. Today you want good health. You want a miracle of supply. You want a miracle of deliverance. 
You want a miracle of restoration? You want a miracle of life? I am here to say to you this morning that as for food, no longer will we give grain, your food, to the enemies. And no foreigner shall drink your new wine. Verse 8. What is yours is yours. The miracles that electrified the first century church in the book of Acts. And I'm sure when you read the book of Acts, you feel power. You feel miracle power. Because people were dragged to the streets just for their sick bodies to be healed by the shadow of the Apostle Peter. So what is your miracle today? What is it you want? The miracle happens every day. The fact that you are alive just this morning and the fact that we are breathing, we are standing and we are walking is in itself is a miracle. The fact that we woke up this morning is a miracle. A miracle is a supernatural act that manifests in the natural realm. What is a miracle? A miracle is a supernatural act. Yes, we are speaking about supernatural. We are in a season of supernatural things. So when a miracle takes place, it's going to be a supernatural act that's going to touch your body this morning, your sick body. It is a supernatural act that's going to cause a breakthrough in your life this morning because it's going to manifest in the natural it's going to manifest because we're going to see it this morning. A miracle cannot be explained by scientists. Miracles cannot be explained because it supersedes the laws, the natural laws that governs our universe. Miracles cannot be explained. You know why? We only understand miracles because we know where a miracle is source. It has its source. And what is that source this morning? It is sourced by the power of the Holy Ghost. So miracles happen by the power of the Holy Ghost. So you needing your miracle this morning, you gotta be sourced by something. You gotta be sourced not by doubt. Doubt will never bring your miracle today. Fear will never bring your miracle. But when there's an activation of the power of God in your life, and when you begin to stand and declare this morning, something's going to happen. A miracle will manifest itself in the natural. Because it's going to be a supernatural event that cannot be explained by man. It will not be explained by doctors. And I'm sure you know of reports of doctors that said you are going to just live for three months and six months. But you know what the supernatural says? That you have life and God has given you life more abundantly. My God has given you life with long life. You will be satisfied. That's your miracle this morning. Because that miracle is powered by the power of the Holy Ghost. This morning, there's so many things that you need there are things that you need to do to bring this miracle. First of all, in order for you to receive your miracle, you got to get moving. You, do, you need not to sit back. You need not to be uh, so uh, sitting back despondent because miracle they can never take place over something that doesn't move. I hold a mic in my hand. And the reason why this mic is working because it is sourced by power. It is sourced by batteries that has been placed into this mic. And these batteries have live cells in it. And when these batteries have been placed in this mic, I now can speak into this mic and it gives forth sound. So under the sound of my voice, you are hearing me because there is sound that is empowering this mind. But on the other hand, if I've put batteries that was dead batteries, dead cells that cannot be used anymore, you will not be able to hear. You will not be able to hear what I say. Wow. 
Why? Because I've put my mind down. Why did I put my mind down? Just to let you know that when batteries are alive and it gives source to this mic and it's giving off sound, it activates something. But when I brought my mind down, it was no sound. It would seem as if I've got dead batteries. This morning, how it is with you, my brother and sister? How it is with you? Do you have what it takes in you, the Word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost to get you moving? That way, when you begin to move, something happens, your miracle comes upon you. That when you are getting involved, when we, you're not a spectator anymore, no believer can be a spectator in this season anymore. The days of spectating is over. I believe right now you've got to be in a season of being active, a participant in the kingdom of God. How can you be an active participant in the kingdom of God in order for your miracle to reach you? Firstly, you got to know that the belief is if I just live my life and just sit back and enjoy the blessings of God and just love God and I'm faithful to Him and it all ends there. No. It goes a step further. Yes, you can serve God with all your heart, you can love Him, you can worship Him, but it doesn't end there. God wants us as children of God to do our part in order to activate your miracle. And the very first point that came to my mind, to my spirit, was being active, an active praiser and a worshiper. Ask Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas needed a miracle, yes. They were in chains and fetters. They could move. Did Paul and Silas complain? No. Did they have gripes? No. Did they uh, say to God, what is going on? Did they plead to God? No. Did they complain? No. They were in chains. They were in chains. Just remember, they were bound. But the one thing that took them and loosed them from that bondage was when they became an active praiser and a worshiper. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 6, verse 25 that they began they were praying and they sang hymns to God and that tells me that they did two things they began to pray they began to worship and begin to praise God and what happened that miracle that they wanted of being loosed from the chains of darkness happened instantaneously because they praised and they worshiped God you want your miracle morning as you are seated right now in your living room, I want you to start praising and worshiping God. Come on, get active because your miracle is upon you. Secondly, you got to make a list of forgiveness. If you think you're going to receive your miracle with bitterness in your heart, you got it all wrong. You will not receive a miracle if you have unforgiveness in your heart. The Bible says forgive daily. And sometimes you may just overlook little things. We may say that's fine, we had an argument. Um, I, 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 I had a little problem with that brother or sister and that was okay. But did you forgive that brother or sister? It's important this morning, my friend. Because it's important for your miracle to take place. It says, the same goes... It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. That is true. Do you know when it's those little things of unforgiveness can stop and block your miracle this morning? Release. Do not own offense this morning. Because we are clearing your road for your miracle this morning. What is the next step? you got to learn to listen to God. You see, the enemy has got up got us so wrapped up in our complaining. He's got us, got us so wrapped up in our, in our problems that when we begin to think 
Our thinking takes over so much so that it blocks out our ears, our spiritual ear from listening to what God has to say. This morning, get rid of that thinking, that negative thinking. You want your miracle? You got to rise up and say, God, I'm going to listen to your voice. You see, people in the Bible, they had to listen to what Jesus said. When they wanted their miracle, they had to listen. The man that was healed with leprosy, what did Jesus tell him? He says, Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. There was an instruction. He had to listen. The, the miracle only happened when the man stretched out his hands. John chapter 9, verse 7 says, says to the man, go wash in the pool. That was an instruction. Because this man had to listen. Jesus and Mary said to the servants, fill the jars up. That was an instruction. He said to the sick man, pick up your mat and walk. That was an instruction. This morning, are you listening to the voice of God? Or are you going to get caught up in your own troubles and problems that you fail to conceive a miracle? Where you fail to receive your miracle, that's going to be a blockage. What's the next thing? Mark chapter 11 verse 23 says, He will do whatever He says. We're talking about the language of faith this morning, people of God. Speak the language of faith. Your words have the power to release life or death. You want your body to be healed today? I want you to speak life over your body because you have authority over that body. Hallelujah. Next point. Do not take no for an answer. If the doctor says this is what it is, this is a report from the doctor and you just have to take medication for the rest of your life to live, you do not have to accept that because you do not take no for an answer. In order for your miracle to come to you, you will say, yes, I believe of the Lord that says I am healed. You have authority over your body for your miracle this morning and you have that authority to speak that word and when that word is spoken it will it must act it's, there must be a manifest a manifestation of a miracle because you took the authority you said the word you declared it you decreed it and do you know what it must happen no word of a doctor or a physician has control over your body. A miracle comes from God because it is powered by the power of the Holy Ghost. So you as a believer have that authority this morning to speak that word and that miracle will come upon you. Be ready and willing to fight for what's yours in the spirit realm. Listen, you're going to fight for what's yours. Your body is yours. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's been created. You've been created in the image of God. So no doctor has any right to dictate to that body. Because when you speak healing, it must happen. You overcome those no's with your yes. Hallelujah. Come on. You overcome those no's. Those no's that you hear from the world. Those negative things that you hear from the world. Overcome it with a yes and say yes. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. And I believe your miracle descends upon you. What's the next thing? You've got to release all doubt. Doubt. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5 verse 36. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Now. When Jairus' daughter was dead, and before Jesus could enter, he said to Jairus, just believe. Don't be afraid this morning. You want a miracle so desperately, and we see like a dead situation. Just believe. And do you know what? When you do not fear, and when you start to believe, it starts to open the door for your miracle. What happened? Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. Second, and the seventh thing, what do you have to do? Do something. Just don't sit there. Come on. You want your miracle, 
you're going to activate something. The Bible clearly tells us that faith without works is dead. James chapter 2 verse 26. So it's clear. If you say I want a miracle and you just sit back and I'm waiting for my miracle, you're going to continue waiting, my brother and sister. But if you don't activate something and do something, the miracle at the Cana of Galilee, at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee, the wine ran out. But Mary said to the servants, and she looked at Jesus, but she knew we needed a miracle. But she had to say something. She says, what he says to you, do it. Whatever Jesus says, do it. There was an activation because jars had to be filled with water in order for your miracle. Listen, you got to do something. The Lord is going to fill you up with something in order for a miracle to take place. Next. you got to plant the word of God in your heart. You see, the word of God is a seed. And when a seed is planted in your heart, it begins to germinate something. This morning, what is it that you want? You want a miracle? Yes. When you plant corn, you're going to get corn. When you plant wheat, you're going to get wheat. What miracle do you want? Do you want your body to be healed? Do you want your children to be restored? Do you want your marriage to be restored? The broken relationship? Do you want reconciliation today? you in a place of desperation where you need supply. God supplies all your needs according to His riches and glory. You're going to use the word. But take the word. And you say, Lord, I'm taking that word that you shall supply all my needs according to your riches and glory and plant it into your spirit. Plant it into your heart. You know what happens? It's like a seed that's planted in like a farmer sows into the ground. You may not see the results overnight, but surely that word is going to work for you. It will germinate into a miracle. A miracle will be conceived when you plant the word of God. Come on. Come on. When you plant the word of God by faith in your heart, it, it conceives a miracle. Germination takes place. It conceives a miracle. And do you know what? In God's timing, it will birth forth a miracle. It will birth forth healing. You will start to see a difference in the things that you are praying for. You will start to see change. And what is it that you want today? I believe that God begins to implant into us hope. What are the other requirements that you need in order for your miracle to be activated? You've got to have patience. Patience is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now patience is actually waiting for God's timing. And I believe patience and faith works together. Patience and faith works together. It keeps your faith strong until you cross the finish line. You feel that you cannot make it anymore. You are weak. But I'm here to say today, be patient. Wait upon the Lord. Do not look at the calendar and say, God, how long this is going to go on? Some look at their watch and say, time is going. But I today declare and implore upon you today, have a spirit of patience together with faith that that miracle will work for you. Lastly, you've got to expect the impossible. What's the impossible? The impossible means that you are now in a place and say, God, I am here with a spirit of expectancy and I know my miracle is going to come upon me. My miracle is going to dawn upon me anytime. The spirit of expectancy is the key to receiving your miracle this morning. What did Jesus say to the woman with the issue of blood? He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. What did he say to blind Bartimaeus? He said, your faith has healed you. So today, it is your faith that's going to make you well, that's going to heal you, that's going to bring your miracle upon you. Lord, I expect the unexpected. I know that this is supernatural days, that I'm going to experience the glory of the Lord. The church will no more call to, oh, lonely, you will not be desolate. We are not in an empty place. We 
because the season of miracles are upon you. What is it that you want today? People might believe, you know, what miracles were a thing of the past. Miracles are not a thing of the past. Some may say it just happened for the Bible to be written and it ended there. No. It was just the beginning for you and I as a church to rise up. Because it was in the book of Acts that when the power of God was released, the church shook, miracles took place. Where are those miracles today? Today I pray that a miracle be delivered to you. What miracle do you desire today? Is it a miracle of supply, a miracle of deliverance, a miracle of healing, restoration and life? But I'm saying to you today, the songwriter clearly says that miracles happen. There's no battle that's going to be lost. I say to you today in the name of Jesus, you are listening to me in this live broadcasting. You will never, ever lose a battle because every miracle belongs to you. It belongs to you as a church. It may seem today in the eyes of the world that the church is falling apart. It may seem to look in the eyes of those who don't know Jesus, that the church is desolate. But I'm here to say to you, this is no time, this is not a desolate place, but this is a time that may we call ourselves the royal diadem is going to be given to the church, the crown of righteousness, the brightness of God is going to arise because miracles descend upon you today. Right now, I believe that no battle is going to be lost. You're not going to be losing any battles. You're not going to die with this sickness and diseases. You're not going to die today thinking that you know what, you are lost out financially. You're going to lose your home. Or you may be unemployed. But I believe today that God is resurrection power and life that is present right now. I'm just going to ask the team just to say those words in the end. The first verse. Never lost a battle. It may seem right now that when Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus, it was useless. Lazarus, did you know what Lazarus was dead for three, four days? And Jesus was not present. Jesus was not present. He was out of town. And Mary came and said, Jesus, if only you were here earlier, my brother would have lived. But do you know what? Time. And I want you to believe right now as the song is being sung that God is opening up that situation that seems like a Lazarus situation, like a tomb like situation, a dead like situation, a situation that's giving you no hope. Oh, but right now we release power. Yes, Lord. I know
without doubt, without fear, with the word of God planted in your heart, I declare this morning that change is taking place right now. I declare right now that your miracle comes upon you. Let that body be healed now, Father. I speak right now that that somebody that's laying in the hospital bed being raised out in Jesus' name. That the tomb of Lazarus be opened in the name of Jesus. As we prophesy life into everybody right now that is desperately looking and searching for a miracle. And Job says that it does miracles that cannot be counted. It cannot be fathomed. And do you know what miracles cannot be counted? Because God is performing and He's doing that miracle right now. I want you to hold on. The woman that I've known for 18 years, she was bent over, but her faith made her whole. The woman with the issue of blood, she, she suffered for years, but she said, and all I need to do is hold on to the touch the hem of His garment. This morning, touch the hem of His garment wherever you are. And say, Jesus, I need you more than anything else. I need my children to change. I need my husband to change. I need my business. I need a turnaround. Things haven't been too good over this lockdown. I know the economy has been shaken. But you declare today by the word and say that God, you are the supplier of my needs. And I know that my needs shall be supplied by you by faith. I want you today to speak into that family member. Maybe there's somebody that's looking, that needs, that's, that maybe has contracted the COVID-19. The demonic plague. I want you to speak and say that the tomb of Lazarus be empty. Walk forth in the name of Jesus. As Jesus said, Come forth, Lazarus. I want you to mention that person's name and say, Come forth in the name of Jesus. Come forth and be healed. We speak life to you right now. We speak a miracle right now this morning. We speak life into your home. We speak life to every church, every house of God. We speak life into every man and woman of God today. We speak life into every congregant of God that are worshipping from their homes. Let their houses become the houses of fire. That Lord it will be filled with praise and worship. Like when Paul and Silas worshipped you, Father. Chains and fetters were broken. Father, today we know that our miracle are loosening chains today. Our miracle today comes upon us to remove every demonic struggle. Maybe there's somebody that's bound with demonic struggles. Right now we speak that every demonic power be loosed in Jesus' name. And we declare a miracle of deliverance. We declare a miracle of healing. We declare a miracle of God of restoration, of life. Today you spoke of God to the storm, Jesus. And you said, be still. So today we command that every storm be still. Whatever is desired, I want you today to testify of a miracle. I want you to testify of the goodness of God. Because I believe that something has happened while the word of God has been preached. Something's happened while you've heard, while you've been listening. And as you can type on and say, I need my miracle. I've received my miracle in the name of Jesus. As you've typed it, you're going to receive the natural because what you confess you will persist. So Father we declare that in the mighty name of Jesus and we call this done in no other name but the name of Jesus. This morning thank you for tuning, thank you for listening, thank you for being the people that you are and I believe that you are still going to hold us in prayer, hold the church, churches in prayer, hold the people of God in prayer. Once the attack is rife, we as a church, we rise up in greater power and we do not accept the pangs of darkness. We do not accept death anymore. But we speak the breath of God that's in our lungs to worship God because we have what it takes. We have the breath of God. We have Zoe life in us. So continue doing that. Continue praising the Lord. And I know that today your miracle is upon you. Stay blessed. Miracles are real and I believe it's happening this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.